Man, two purple daily. This time it is a couple days late because of uh, the Fourth of July comments from YouTube. That means it's Judd. That means it's Declan, uh, sponsored by our friends at, as always, at Surly Brewing, also TCL Television. Check out sports on a TCL because that's the way to watch sports, as Declan and I can both tell you. Um, oh, yeah. And we and we will talk about our friends at Surly shortly because the summer of Surly is here and now. But Declan, you have pulled some comments for the past couple of days as we get closer and closer to the beginning of training camp um, from people who have chimed in, I'm guessing on our list, I'm guessing on uh, a variety of Vikings topics. So I will turn it over to you. Yeah, some fun uh, ideas listed here in our comment section on top of some great other discussions that we can find and go down here. But let's start with this one from Michael from our Tuesday conversation of Kevin O'Connell potentially being a favorite or his, I guess, path to being the NFL coach of the year in 2022 in his first season. Michael says, what are you guys thinking? NFL coach of the year, first time head coach implementing two new schemes who he has never coached before, let alone call offensive plays. He is also inheriting an interior offensive line that can't pass block, a defensive line that can't stop the run. Other than that, KLC has a great chance in this league. It is a tall task from Michael here. But you know what? Let me let me spin it this way to you, Judd, and, and get your thoughts on this. Um, how much do the Vikings have to bank on their defense massively improving, and can they make that jump big enough to make them because I think their offense is going to be fine like I, I don't know how good how good it can be but I think the offense still will be fine even with the first year head coach right but how what, what does the defense have to do to help solidify things and make things easier for them to be a playoff team and potentially make Kevin O'Connell a coach of the year well I think it has to be I mean it was it was remarkably bad at times in 2021 and I think it's going to improve now this is also conditional on a couple of big things. Daniil Hunter has to play. I mean, if you go back to the Dallas game, before that, the defense was not bad. Daniil Hunter by himself makes an enormous difference. If he gets hurt again, third consecutive year, it's trouble. But where the point in the coach of the year is being missed is, as we discussed, this is an award that almost never goes to the best coaches. This is an award that goes to the, oh my gosh, that team was expected to stink and they don't stink. He's coach of the year. I think Stefanski won this. Um, so, like, if if the point was, you know what, this is the Belichick Award, right? Every year this goes to Bill Belichick. I'd be like, yeah, okay, Kevin O'Connell's got no chance. But this almost never goes to the deserving coach, Sean McVay, right? He didn't get it last year. Probably should have, right? But he didn't because it's going to go to a coach who's going to surprise. The only reason why, and this is remarkable, but... When Phil gave us those odds, Brian Dable, who's going to be the coach of a Giants team that sucked, that has Daniel <laughs> Jones back at quarterback, has good odds. Why? It's a New York team, big market team that might surprise. So, like, don't think of this as, oh, I mean, Kevin O'Connell, no way. He's young and he won't get it. If he achieves any form, like if they Vikings win the division, and keep in mind, the voting comes to an end at the end of the regular season, not the playoffs. So if the Vikings win the division, he's got a great chance. So, like, you can eliminate right now, McVay's out. He's not going to win it. Belichick, not going to. Uh, a guy like Tomlin, my guess, not going to. Like, you can eliminate the guys that we consider to be probably deserving candidates at times because the the voters are biased against them because they say, oh, your team's good. So it's the surprise team that often emerges to win it. Quickly, I will say just off that point, I think of all those guys you listed and all the guys we talked about on Tuesday, the Andy Reeds of the world, the Belichicks, et cetera. Yep. Um, I, th I actually think Tomlin might have the better chances because Pittsburgh's turning over a new leaf, right? And if Tomlin can prove he can still do it with a new yep. quarterback, with a new system, you know, he, he actually might be one of the guys who is very well established that we talked about that could uh, potentially threat for that. I'll give you one more negative comment before a positive comment, also still in this vein. Uh, Dennis says the odds are massively against KOC, our secondary, our O-line, the receiving depth, our question marks. I don't know if I agree with the receiving depth part. Uh, Cousins would have to reverse most of his flaws and become a lion. A kicker has to be in on crunch time. And rookie head coach KO will have to be out coaching most of the league on top of that, not his year. But Joe says we're making the playoffs this year, but not much beyond that. But give it a few years and we will have a Rome of our own in Minneapolis. 
So, all right. If we're going to go down the path that the Vikings have, Kirk Cousins should have a fantastic year. Like, we are basically being told Zimmer couldn't coach last year. He was terrible. That he sabotaged the roster. This is now an offensive coach who is going to and supposed to maximize Kirk. So I can't sit here and, and be, be like, oh, the flaws, the flaws. Because you know what? The Vikings have picked their path. Kirk better be damn good. Like, this better work. Like, you're, you're bringing him. You brought him back. You had the option to not do it. And you put, again, all of your eggs in the Kirk basket. I expect great things now. There's no question about it. Like, you had every opportunity to say, you know what, it really didn't work out. New coach, a bit of a grace period. We're going to develop a quarterback. And you said, no, 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 I'm doubling down on Kirk. So don't, so don't now tell me, well, I don't know about Kirk. Like, this better work. That it has to work. This is where the pressure is. When you bring back all of the players they brought back, damn right there's pressure, and it's immediate. And don't say, well, Judd's trying to set them up to fail. No, I'm not. They've set themselves up to be great. Be damn mm -hmm. good. Be damn good. Now, do I think that they will be my heart of hearts? Not necessarily. Not really. But they are banking on you believing that Kirk Cousins is going to maximize every ounce that he has in his body and be a playoff uh, QB. There's no question about that. That's what they're saying to you. So... That's Bob with a Kirk Cousins thought here. He says, Kirk is a good quarterback, and I look forward to seeing what he can do with a better offensive coaching staff. But I think everyone saw what the KC and Buffalo quarterbacks, Mahomes and Josh Allen, could do in their playoff games last year and thought, there is no way Kirk could ever show that kind of moxie and improv skill, which is what is needed today in order to win a Super Bowl. You know, Bob, Bob is right here to the point where we can scheme up a new offense for Kirk and, and, and make things a little easier make language and the code words easier, you know, his cop out there, and also just give him a coach that embraces him for the first time in his Vikings tenure. But Bob's right. Like, of, of all the things you're not going to be able to change from Kirk, like, you, you can't make him a moxie, improv, skill type of quarterback. Like, Kirk is who he is, and there's a lot of good traits of Kirk Cousins. He can throw a great deep ball. He's a very smart, intelligent quarterback. So it, it's not that he can just become Mahomes and Allen overnight, but do I think he has a chance – once it's built correctly and once the infrastructure is actually in place and sound that the Vikings could contend for a Super Bowl, of course I do. So it just it it's all about molding these different types of quarterbacks. Kirk isn't the Allen or the Mahomes, but at the same time, um, I, I can still see him with being propped up properly to be a good quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, I don't think he is a Super Bowl QB, but I do think that if they are right, he can certainly be a playoff QB that can win playoff games. Again, I have a philosophical difference in what I think of this team compared to what they think, but what they think is important because what they are doing is they are applying immediate pressure to say the head coach previously and his staff, and this is partially true in 2021, didn't do a good job. We are going to come in and change that. Um, so ultimately is my expectation that Kirk cousins can get to a super bowl in, in his career. No, I don't think he ever will, but they think he can. And that's where they are applying pressure on themselves because what they are what they are telling you now is they watched the Buffalo Kansas City game. They've watched probably every game that you can watch, and they said we can get to that place. Okay, show me. But I mean, I'm not going to back off now and be like, oh, I, I I was you know what I was right and they were wrong, and I'm okay with that. No, um, this is where the Gobert trade. Conversely, I like I like saying you know what we're good, but we got to blow some stuff up. Um, which is why I don't rip taking chances. Uh, when you stand pat, though, you better be right about that, especially when you're paying a quarterback like Kirk. And you know what? If Kirk can take this team places, that is fantastic. Um, clearly, Quazy and Kevin O'Connell think he can. Transitioning here to some uh, uh, some fun and interesting topics uh, from our listeners in our comments section. But first, uh, you know, Judd, I was on – I was on uh, at the cabin this weekend out in Shell Lake, Wisconsin. Yeah, that's right. Old Dex Tweets does go to a cabin in Wisconsin. I will say it's not my cabin. I don't own the cabin. I have the okay. Judd Zolgad plan, I think, which you have as well. Don't own a cabin. Rely on yep. your friends and your family to go to the cabin. And then if yep. you are invited to tag along, you know, if you'd like to go, go and attend the cabin. But when I was out in Shell Lake, Judd, I noticed it was a nice clear lake. We were running off the dock, so it was a nice 89-degree day. Enjoying the summer of Surly, which we'll talk about here in just a second. But I noticed it was an aquaside lake. 
I noticed it was a lake clear of those weeds and, and that nasty lake water that you step in. And it, it's just the worst. It, there's nothing worse that kills the summer of surly vibes, Judd, when you put your little foot down in a, in a big patch of algae. And Aquaside pellets can help you remove that product. If you'd like your lake, lake home or your pond or wherever, remove that algae. Check out my friends at Aquaside. It's Aquaside.com to learn more. They're a local company in White Bear Lake. Aquaside pellets, they're a safe product with the EPA and DNR. Check them out. Aquaside.com to learn more. And yes, Judd, it was the summer of surly. Numerous surly supremes the variety pack my friend have you tried the surly variety pack oh the supremes are fantastic I, i'm gonna t tell you right now there's two ways in my opinion to go there's the supreme variety pack which is outstanding the logic bomb which i completely love and when you step so when you get to the cabin and you go to that lake and you step on that pontoon oh. i love a good pontoon oh yeah I moves nice and slow you can enjoy the day and you can enjoy your favorite beer responsibly of course but that is where the summer of surly now in full swing comes in because the variety of beers that they are churning out right now for this time of year are absolutely fantastic and as always you know if you're out on the lake or the pontoon if you're sitting in your backyard if you're sitting in your your den watching a twins game as always show us your cans I, i'm at jay zolgan on twitter at score north we want to see your cans what are you sipping on just make sure if you are sipping you're sipping on a surly uh, here's a fun idea, and we don't have to go too down this path. In fact, I think I'd like to take this idea as its own episode, maybe as one of our more off-season talkers before training camp starts at the end of the month. Uh, but he says, here's a fun idea. Top 10 Vikings disappointing players. Uh, that could be for injury, legal reasons, just general crappiness, as he says, wrong scheme fit. Judd, I want you to give me your three most disappointing Vikings players, oh. just off the top of your head. It, and oh. it doesn't have to be in order, but three players – Instant reaction that come to mind to Judd Zolgad that were the most disappointing in their Vikings tenure. Troy Williamson. Mm-hmm. It's one. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a three draft picks two thousand seven. <laughs> or no, no, two thousand five and on. Oh five, yeah. Yep. Uh Troy Williamson, mm -hmm. Erasmus James, Cordero Patterson. Patterson because he had problems on the field. But you know, it's partially on them because they never maximized him. They never mm -hmm. figured out, oh, my God, this guy is big, but he, and he can't really run a route, but he can play in the backfield some. Um, I, I think that was an opportunity lost. Troy couldn't catch the ball. And, and to draft <laughs> him seventh overall with the pick that you got from the Raiders in the Moss trade because he was fast, like yeah. without making sure he could catch a ball, um, Not a that great was plan. bad. Erasmus James was taken, I believe it was 18th in the same 2005 draft. Uh, he was great at Wisconsin. He was per, he was seen as the guy that was going to solve the Vikings' edge rushing problems. He was going to come in, play right end, and dominate. My observation of Erasmus was, unfortunately, he, he was unbelievably gifted, so he dominated in college. But I don't think he really liked football much. And when you get to the National Football League, that's a big problem. So just off the top of my head, mm -hmm. those three right there, all first-round picks, all who came in with pretty big expectations. Cordero sort of delivered for a while. I, I think yeah, he did. He, but it's he was a, the best of those three. But yeah, it's a, but. Yeah, it's a disappointment. And I covered Troy's last game as a Viking in Denver when, you know, the ball, he dropped a crossing route, and Tavares has never thrown – God rest his soul, a better pass than he threw on that bomb, and it went off Troy's mask, and that was all she wrote. You? Oh, Treadwell's, yeah, Treadwell's up there for me. That's a good one. Um, you know, that was a guy who was supposed to help solve Huge the bust. receiving core issues. That's a good um, one. You know, they, I don't like it, because Trey Waynes wasn't a bust. Ponder, yeah, you Ponder's, 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 in the, there? Ponder's like, the George Washington. I that's, a slam, said. that's such a slam dunk, though. Um, yeah, and I'm trying to think of, like, other guys that just, that, that didn't really, pay. you know, I, Josh Robinson was this fast cornerback out of Florida, right? Josh Robinson was a second or third round pick, but at yeah, the same time, he was a couldn't third cover anyone. Uh, I believe Josh, I believe Asher Allen, Josh Robinson, and Marcus McCauley were all third round cornerback picks, right? Yeah, and, and of course, that's where you fall in love with a 40 time. I think Robinson had like, you know, the fastest or second fastest 40 time among cornerbacks and was supposed to be this this nice now shut down cornerback. Well, he was so yeah. fast, he couldn't cover anyone. So uh, congrats well, to Josh Well, they put Robinson. him in the slot. He had never played there. He had no business. Yeah. That that was one of the biggest crimes of, of the Spielman. It's not really less. I mean, you got rid of Antoine Winfield and you put Josh Robinson in the slot and we went to talk to him. I remember at that uh, off-season camp, 
We're like, you know, have you played the slot before? Because the slot is like super intricate. It's like, no. It's like, <laughs> oh, this ain't gonna work. God. Like outside um, corner is hard. A uh, Chris Cook is one. Like we Chris could. Cook. There's a litany of guys here. Uh, John says most underappreciated Vikings discussion. He says, uh, don't sleep on Henry Thomas. He was a beast, often overshadowed yeah, by good. Chris Dolman and Keith Millard. Another uh, another underappreciated Viking one there from from John. I love all these topics too that keep coming at us. So um, absolutely, Henry and Thomas, that's a good Adam one. The, Adam Hank was really list. good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he and he and Randall, if I'm not mistaken, in the early '90s formed a really good one-two team. Now Johnny was unbelievable. I, I mean, Hall of Famer, just well, yeah, a great player. But Hank was really good and really solid. Um, so, so that's was, a good one. Was Hank more of a? Um, you know, for my generation, was he more yeah. of like a Ray Edwards kind of like nice complimentary end? Or was, was he, was he, he a was better, better? I call him Edwards kind of guy. Better than that. If I'm not mistaken, it was. So he, Hank and Johnny were inside. So okay. they, they were inside where Ray was the left defensive end at the time, the base end. Um, and no, I think Hank was like Ray was a nice player. I think Hank was a better player. And that, and those one two that one two punch was really damn good like so, like ev- maybe more of an everson type of complimentary piece yeah like good, probably good, good piece right? i'm trying to think of all i'm trying to think of defensive tackles uh to comp them to like brian like, robinson yeah probably a better brian like because because like the problem is pat and kevin kevin was the three tech and pat was a true nose yeah so he was just a massive man he was good really good um, I feel like Hank was shiftier and faster. So yeah, like an okay. like a Griffin that could move inside might okay. be a little bit closer. But those two were really good together. Just giving my the younger audience like me a, a good comp to try to fantasize of what what he was actually like. The Vikings with, uh, had Vikings dude. Tenure. The Vikings back then had speed there too. Like mm-hmm. Johnny and and Hank, they could move. Like that was not an old school thing, and they were a nightmare. We ranked our uh, top four holidays last week on Four Question Friday. Matt chimes in with just four days, just like he kind of hijacked it a little bit. He says, number one, Thanksgiving. Okay. That's his favorite day. I don't disagree with him there. Uh, two, Super Bowl Sunday. He loves Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday. Not, you know what? It's lost a little bit of a pun. Yeah, it, I'm not it's a good day. It. I'm trying I to like, like playoff. I like playoff Sundays and weekends more than Super Bowl. Yeah, I could actually make the case, in my opinion, the best weekend – on the football calendar year for me is the divisional round. I think the divisional round is the best weekend of it's the top four. It's it's you got the championship Sundays that's coming up next week, but I think it's divisional round is the one that excites me. Yeah, Super Bowl's kind of lost. It's and it's more of the novelty, right? It's and the, I just don't it's enjoy the appetizers the, and the I don't enjoy waiting around. I don't enjoy yeah. the wait. I, yeah. I think that the divisional round and the conference championship day mm. are my two favorite because the first round is a bunch of games which I really enjoy. But yeah, you're not yeah. really guaranteed those are going to be great. Yeah. I feel like divisional round is elite talent. And, and mm-hmm. then conference championship, it could be sort of a, um, a toss-up at times because those yeah. games aren't always great. But if they're great, they are memorable as hell. Uh, and he rounds out his list, uh, number three, fourth of July, which we just celebrated. He says, yeah. number four, which I think is very underrated, is Halloween. I, I, again, hate crap on Matt. I, I stopped caring about Why? Halloween about sophomore year of college i'd like to I know just, why matt I, likes I, it i i i don't know and I, 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 as a kid you know i if you would oh. if you told 10 year old declan it's probably like yeah. number two after christmas it. yeah obviously. um and i'm just not a costume guy like even as i've gotten to my late adult years and you still have friends like we're gonna have like an adult costume yeah, it's no. like uh can i agree how about we just go over and we we have some surlies like can we yeah. just can we just do that i don't need to dress up as anything i'm Halloween's a character great for, every day and halloween's great for kids yeah like it's yeah. awesome for kids i'm with you um I don't even really consider it like like it barely rates for me. Yeah. Like yeah. I lock the doors and turn off the lights. <laughs> I don't do want kids coming it. around. No. Um, and, and then the one before that was what? Before Halloween? Uh, Fourth of July. Fourth of July. You know what I've, I decided? Fourth of July is all dependent on one thing. One thing to me. What day of the week does it fall on? It's, this is very... Because like we worked on Tuesday. Point. So I'm not going to get... Now I'm not saying I didn't have some Surly's. On Monday, I did. But I'm not going to go maximum effort, shall yeah. we say, if it fall, if I then have to go to work the next day. I will say when it falls on a Monday or a Tuesday, that's the worst possible. Because even Wednesday, you can get an outfit because you can start your weekend early on Thursday. Correct. But when it's on a Monday or a Tuesday, it's just the worst possible time. Like yep. it, the, it, You can take a Monday off if it's on a Sunday. 
That's um, a good point. You know, if it's that. on a Friday or Saturday, it's still fine. But if it's Monday or Tuesday, it's just the worst. It it it, it messes. Like and you the said, Sunday scaries just come on yeah. on Monday. Then I don't like that. So like, like it's that. the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know what? The thing too is, and I, I'm old, so but the fireworks thing and like I've all the no stuff fireworks. going. No, I know, yeah. but I mean, it's jumped the shark completely. Yeah, I don't like. I it. mean, you see more people. It feels like, and I've I've always been para- paranoid about being hurt by fireworks. Yeah. But like you know, all Vinny of the, the dog, not a all fan of the fireworks. crap. Stella's really good with them. She doesn't care. Oh wow, okay. I think she's high or something. Oh yeah, maybe. Gummies, maybe. perhaps. Maybe. I mean, I can't hey. control my my dog daughter. So like, I don't know what type of shipments are coming into this house. All right, last one here from Al as our Judd question of a Judd comment of the week to wrap things out. Yeah, Talking about that. your write that down predictions, he goes, "This just goes to show that Judd is virtually no more accurate than any of us at predictions or takes, and it's a tough pill for him to swallow, but nonetheless true." Read and react, Judd. That's what uh, Al Miller has to say to you about your write that down. Is there anything off in particular? Uh, I mean, the fact you're that dead last, like? right? And and write that. No, down I'm not dead last. No, the viewers the, are. The viewers are. Oh well, I'm second to last. I'm I did see last. someone say today on on the write that down episode that just just posted also on this wednesday afternoon um you are tanking this year and that's why you're pushing predictions in next year it's a strategy by judd zolgad i don't like to call it i never would call it tanking but Mm -hmm. i mean what i would call it is setting myself up nicely astros for future successes (laughs) okay for future successes yeah no no, i'm setting myself up for future Uh, yes it's a form of tanking i've decided that this is not you know what, Dex? Every year can't be your year. And some years you just decide it's not my year, and so you start to set yourself up. Because right. if I get one right now, what does it do? Move me up a little bit? I don't care about that. I'm building, I build long-term success here. Okay. But I mean, I'm all wrong. Right. I'm wrong a lot. I'm cool You are wrong that. a lot. You like, are wrong a lot. We all are. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are all wrong. We don't know more. What we do have are scorching hot takes. Scorching hot takes. Uh, find the today's episode of Write That Down also on this YouTube channel. You can also hit the subscribe button. Daily Minnesota Vikings Entertainment. Seven days a week. Purple Daily. That's comments from YouTube. Back tomorrow.